Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Dr. Victoria Andy Darcia, and she is a functional medicine doctor. She is amazing, and today she wants to talk about perimenopause, menopause, and the changes women go through, and how you could actually help yourself when you're going through your changes. So many women have all these different symptoms. They don't know what to do, how to go about it how to get rid of the symptoms, how to change their lifestyle so they don't have to feel all the uncomfortableness that they go through. And she has a lot of different scenarios and answers to help you get through the tough times of perimenopause and menopause. So Dr. Victoria, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm so excited that you're here. And tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Well, thank you for having me. I love this topic very much, so I'm excited to dive into it. So I started out as an internal medicine physician. I'm board certified. And when I started my residency program, I realized that it wasn't exactly what I wanted to be doing. And I accidentally stumbled upon integrative medicine. And I went there and that's at the University of Arizona in Tucson through the Andy Weil integrative medicine program. But later I started to struggle with my own hormonal issues which is why I decided to go through the route on women's hormones. I had been on birth control for a really long time and I struggled so much coming off of it. And then I realized, okay, I'm an internal medicine physician. I should know what my body is doing right now and how to recover from that. And I don't, what are other people doing? Right. So that's when I started going in and doing research, seeing what was out there. Um, and kind of like around the time is when, you know, people are talking more about, you know, birth control and hormones. It was like around that time. So there was new information coming out. So I decided to dive deep with the functional medicine program. And then I started my company called, uh, it's Healthful Roots. I do telehealth and I started working with women. It varies from like fertility through like perimenopause and menopause. And that's what I do now. And I love it. Uh, you know, I, I was telling you earlier, like, I think it's so important that women understand that there is a solution to perimenopause and menopause and even postmenopause. You know, there's so many women when they're going through perimenopause, like I was telling you, I didn't even know that I was in perimenopause. I just all of a sudden started to get all these symptoms. I got so fatigued. I didn't want to get out of bed. You know, my my desire to have, you know, sex went all the way down the hill. I had no interest in it whatsoever. I was menstruating. My cycles were completely off. They were really heavy. You know, I was bleeding like longer than I, a normal person supposed to bleed. I was just going through all these different things and mood swings. Oh, my God. You know, I'm lucky my husband's still with me. I just was like all over the place. And so I decided to go to a functional medicine doctor and that's when they tested me and they found what was going on and my hormones were completely off. And once I got my hormones balanced, I felt like a new person. It was like gradual changes, but yeah. it, when it got to a point by the third month, I started noticing pretty significant changes. And then by six months, even more so. And as time went on, I felt better and better and better. And I started to get a lot of energy back and I started to feel like a whole new person. I felt younger. I felt more vibrant, you know, and, you know, I, it was just like a life changing thing for me. And, you know, for women out there that are starting to go through um, symptoms, you know, a lot of women don't even know that they're going through perimenopause like I did. Maybe you can go over some of the symptoms because some of them are really gradual and some of them are really really, you know, really, you know, strong symptoms that, you know, and you're just, but you don't understand where they're coming from and why they're there. Yeah. And I think that's a big thing because when, like I mentioned before, when, before we started, it can be so different for everybody. Everybody knows the hot flashes, right? And that is like the most common one, but people don't talk about how your sleep gets disrupted, right? You start having issues sleeping, your body composition changes. So you might be someone who's been an avid exerciser all your life and you watch what you eat, but all of a sudden you're putting weight on and you can't understand why I have people who like try keto or they're cutting down calories and they, they just can't get the weight down. That's another one. Palpitations. A lot of women will start complaining about palpitations and they'll go see a cardiologist and the cardiologist says like, hey, no, you're good. Everything checks out without really realizing that it's a hormonal thing. And the other random one I like to bring up all the time is because my mom struggled with this and I didn't realize it at that time, frozen shoulder, 
right? Women will start getting like issues and pain in their shoulder. And that is a sign of hormonal changes because estrogen is a lubricant. So once your estrogen starts going down, you're going to start getting more joint pain. Uh, right. So that was like a really random one. And then, you know, the other ones that we're more familiar with are like mood swings, irritability, uh, depression, and anxiety, which can be related to these hormone changes. And interestingly, because you joked about your husband still being with you, but the rates of divorce go up during that time. Wow. And yeah, there's a, a book that was written by, I think her name is Marie Haver, but um, it's the new menopause is the name of the book. Okay. And she talks about that in that book uh, because it's just such a, it's a challenging time for some people and they don't understand what's happening and people around them don't know how to help them. Right. So um, I get a lot of that. And then fatigue being another one. I have had women who come to me with various issues and they're down, their social life is down, they have no sex drive, and then you start them on hormones. And a few months later, they're like, I just thought I was lazy, mm -hmm. right? But that wasn't it at all, is that your hormones was off. And then the last thing that we need to mention, because it's really important, is that women are two times more likely than men to develop dementia. And they mm -hmm. have seen that it is because of these hormonal shifts that we undergo in our lifetime. And you can start seeing changes in the brain around age 40. There's a researcher and her name is Dr. Lisa Moscone, and she does TED Talks on this, which is also something that I think is important to mention because we don't know that. We don't talk about that, right? Yeah. And you went to a functional medicine doctor and a lot of times we're doing it, you know, for a mood to get better, aesthetic reasons, you want to be on hormones, but nobody wants to end up with dementia, right? So if you can start in the perimenopause phase kind of uh, adjusting and balancing your hormones, you can prevent things from happening down the line. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, I, I think a lot of women too, um, are afraid to see a doctor outside because they go to the primary doctor first and the primary doctor, I don't think I've ever been to a primary doctor that has encouraged someone to go to a functional medicine doctor because it's just, they, they just, they, because a functional medicine doctor wants to prevent the problem before it occurs. And a primary doctor doesn't bother until the, pro the problem is actually there. And then they usually put, give you medication. And then a lot of times that medication will cause other symptoms. And then they'll be yeah. back in, they'll be back in the office in about a month saying, you know, I have this symptom and that symptom and this symptom. Then they'll give another medication to make those other symptoms go away. And then before you know it, you're on two or three drugs and you're, you're, you're you know, some of them can interact with each other and make you tired and you're not really feeling any better. You're, you're not getting better. The root cause is still there. You're still ha you still have yeah. hormonal balance. So you know, people should really realize, I want to emphasize uh, a functional medicine doctor is phenomenal. Like I've, I've been to a functional medicine doctor. I know many people that have been to a functional medicine doctor and it's great because when they do their tests and they do their blood work and they check everything out, a lot of times they could look at the blood work, you know, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but you can see when some of the levels are starting to go off a little bit and they're not right. And the possibility of X, Y, and Z occurring in, is a possibility. So let's like, you know, look into this and see what we can do. So it, 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 it's a great way, not only to balance your hormones, but to, you could even prevent illnesses and stuff like that, you know? So I, I, I love the fact that, you know, functional medicine doctors are, you know, they're very intuitive and they're very into integrative med medication and, and medicine. And it, it can help you in so many ways because, you know, in perimenopause, menopause, you know, I started to see the changes. And then when you get into menopause, it gets, you know, it gets more severe and your body changes and you don't feel like the same person anymore, you know, and you don't want to slow down. You still want to feel youthful, you know, and, you know, is it, is it possible to get that youth back when you, when you balance your hormones? Yes, but I will say the sooner you start, the better the outcome right? I've had women who come to me when they're already menopausal, and then you can, you know, work with uh, balancing their hormones and they start to feel better. But the sooner the st you start, like the, the better and the longer you'll feel youthful. Right. It affects your, your, like physically, your bones, even osteoporosis is a big risk. If you start hormonal therapy early, you can potentially prevent that. And I just want to mention that the other thing that 
is important that your functional medicine doctor should do is that we work with you and your preference. I have women who come to me and they're like, hey, my hormones are off, but I don't want to start hormone therapy. Completely understandable. There are nutrition changes that you can make and there are certain like herbs and things that you can eat, teas, whatever, that can help you rebalance your hormones, you know, to the best of our ability naturally in that way. And then you have the bioidentical hormones and, you know, those, I think hormones got a bad rap because there was, you know, the Women's Health Initiative study that came out and then they were like, oh, hormone causes cancer, but those were synthetic hormones that we were working with. You obviously have to consider people's risk, but the risk is not what we thought it was based off of what came out of that study. The risk is a lot lower. And the benefits, if you look at like your heart benefit, physical, uh, for your bones, for your mental health and preventing dementia, like the benefits outweigh the risks. Um, but I just want to put that out there because a lot, some people are not really uh, inclined to start hormone therapy, but that's not the only thing we do. We don't just like slap hormones onto everybody. We can work with you and what your preference is. I think a lot of people don't realize too that the whole body is run by hormones and that testosterone plays a big role also. And I think a lot of times when, when people talk about testosterone, they immediately think about men, but it, it plays a big role in women's, uh, in women's body. Can you maybe explain that a little bit? Yeah. So we all, we, we have all three hormones and we talk a lot about estrogen and progesterone, but testosterone is very important for your maintaining muscle mass, also cognitively as well, and sex drive, right? That's like one of the, the hormones that kind of plummets and then you start having issues with your sex drive. And, you know, you don't have to be injecting it. You can do it topical and it's at a lot lower dose than men take it. Um, very rarely people will experience like hair growth in unwanted places, but then that just means that you have to go a, like a dose down, but take your voice doesn't change. You're not getting like, you know, weird acne or hair growth normally, but it's a really important hormone. And what I've noticed with the women that started in my practice, one, if they're trying to lose weight, they notice that it's easier when they start testosterone. I've also noticed cognitively, which I've already mentioned, but I think testosterone plays a big role in that. I'll have women who, um, you know, they say I didn't have a social life before I wasn't interested. And then they, you start them on testosterone and they become a little bit more lively or they were having issues concentrating at work. And they're like, you know, I thought that like, I just had to retire because it just wasn't working for me. And you start them on testosterone and they're like, okay, like work is getting a little bit easier. Um, but I definitely recommend that. And they've done studies that show that the combination of progesterone, estrogen and testosterone together can be very helpful for preventing osteoporosis, more so than the medications that we have for osteoporosis. Wow. I think, you know, when, when people, um, you know, a lot of times too, uh, you know, the cortisol level goes up also. Yeah. That, that plays a big role in a lot of things, especially weight gain, your stress level. It really, I think, affects the whole body, doesn't it? It does. And I'm glad that you brought that up um, because the average patient that I see is perimenopausal. So late 40s, uh, early 50s. And these are moms, right? Some of them are running their own businesses and they're doing like CrossFit or they're running marathons and like doing all the things as they come to me. And they're like, I'm super active and I can't lose weight or I'm having trouble getting out of bed in the morning. I'm exhausted. And sometimes their doctor will tell them, well, it's because you're doing all these things that you're tired, but it becomes debilitating. And so what I have noticed, I use a test called the Dutch test, which is a urine test, which can look at the cortisol level throughout the day, as well as your sex hormones. And cortisol is a stress hormone and you need it to survive you don't need sex hormones to survive. So what your body does is when you're stressed and you're making a lot of cortisol, then your body says, you know what, let's not produce the sex hormones that much as much for now because we don't need that. We need the cortisol. And so uh, one uh, in particular case that I remember is her cortisol level was like flat because she was just burnt out. So I told her, you're not gonna be able to run for a couple of months. Like, let's like take three months, no running. Let's just do Pilates and yoga and kind of calm everything down. We changed how she ate. We incorporated journaling and meditation and all these things. She started to feel so much better. She went from like, I can't get out of bed in the morning. You know, I am so irritated in the afternoon. I don't want to talk to my kids and husband. 
to she was feeling so much better. She had more energy that she was able to incrementally start running again, but knowing, you know, I'm not going to run every day. Like I need to have yoga and I need to like do some things that are going to be restorative. And the other thing that was interesting is that she had had irregular periods for seven years. And when we had her cortisol levels, like balance up again, she's like, I have regular periods for the first time in seven years. Right. And so that is like really uh, crazy because you don't always have to start hormones. Sometimes you just need to like tone it down. And I think that as women, we just, we do so much really, especially if you have a family and you're trying to do everything and you yeah. think, oh, I need to exercise more. It's going to make me look better or if I exercise more. And it, But sometimes it counterintu- it's counterintuitive. It's actually doing more damage because it's driving up your cortisol and women will get particularly uh, belly fat right? Mm-hmm. When they have dysregulated cortisol, because they'll tell me like, my arms are toned, my legs look good, but I can't get rid of the belly fat. And that's kind of a sign that, hey, we're dealing with a cortisol issue here. Right. Now, how, you know, what are some ways that you can get lower your cortisol level? Because I know that many women find it very difficult. There's been books written about it. And women, you know, especially find it very um, hard to, to lower their cortisol level. It's hard because it requires lifestyle changes, right? Um, In my practice, how I would deal with that is that initially we start out with like some herbal supplements, some adaptogens and adding magnesium, making sure that people are sleeping. So I address the sleep, we add some herbs and then we say, okay, what in your lifestyle can we fix? So I'll have the women who are exercising twice a day and then it's a matter of cutting down to once a day and adding restorative exercises like yoga and things that are are a little bit more calming, right? Because you want to calm the nervous system. The other thing that becomes an issue is that if you are in high stress mode, you know, the intermittent fasting is really popular, but that's a bad time to do it. Because if you're already in high stress and you're doing intermittent fasting, your body doesn't feel safe and it's going to try to like retain all the nutrients that you put into it. Oh, wow. So yeah. So that's a big, you know, one that I have to like encourage people it's intermittent fasting is great, but not when you're having issues with, um, cortisol and stress. And then the herbal supplements, as I mentioned, focusing on sleep. And then a lot of times it's also like, who can you ask for, for help? Right. Like sometimes people do need to talk to a therapist about whatever stressful situations are going on. Are you not communicating with your husband and telling him that you need help for certain aspects I think it becomes more of like how can we simplify our life and that's hard right but when I have my patients do that their outcomes are so good but it does take a while with the herbs you can see improvement in about three months but yeah like people can they'll start feeling a little bit better but then the lifestyle factors are super important and then six months it takes six months to a year to even see changes on your labs, which is, you know, important to know because it does yeah. take some time and people get discouraged. Oh, it definitely takes time. You know, they always, they always suggest, you know, at least three months to start seeing little, little changes in your body. It does take time, you know, especially when you're, you're trying to balance your hormones or in anything, if you really think about it, it, you know, there's oh, the first couple of months is when you're, you're start, your body's getting used to a whole new way of, of, of doing things. And it's, it's changing gradually. So you're going to see gradual changes. You know, the body just doesn't go from one extreme to the next. And I think people have to understand that and have patience. Yeah. Yeah. So that is, um, the biggest thing and people understand that when they come to me and you can always go back right like if you're a uh, big into cross you can always go back to doing the things that you enjoy probably at a lower level not as intense uh, yeah. but you definitely have to take a step back now what kind of herbs do you suggest if, with, if someone has a high cortisol level and they're trying to lower their cortisol level are there specific supplements that are, are that do really well for women that help to maybe lower possibly their cortisol level? Yeah, so I like to use blends. I know a lot of people talk about um, ashwagandha and I think ashwagandha is great, but I like to do um, adaptogenic blends. So that'll be a mix of like uh, schizandra and rhodiola and like other ones that are less commonly known. And I like the brand Gaia. And so there's two, right? Sometimes people have low, they'll have high cortisol during the day 
or they'll have high cortisol at night, which makes it difficult to sleep. And the Gaia brand, they have one that's like an AM and a PM. So depending on like what you're having issues with, you can start with that. And then um, if you're having low cortisol, I mean, obviously you have to test this first. Like I wouldn't just go and buy all the things. Um, yeah. Licorice is good for helping bring up your cortisol levels and it's deglycerinized licorice so that it doesn't affect your blood pressure. And then there are certain teas as well. Like if you're having problems sleeping, lemon balm is a really good one, but it can also calm down your nervous system and things like oat straw are really good as well, which we use in like stinging nettle. So I'm a big fan of teas. I think down the line, if I can make my own like tea brand with the blends, because I'm always like, look for lemon balm, look, lemon balm, look for valerian. And, you know, it gets a little complicated, but I have all these like different jars of teas at home because it's really, it can be very helpful. Oh yeah. I love tea. I, I think tea is so effective. A lot of times, you know, I use teas for various reasons and, and it's just very, it, it's very effective. Tea is, is very, I don't think people realize how, how effective it is. And, uh, and it's enjoyable. You know, if you like something nice and warm, you know, it's in, you can have it anytime during the day, depending on what you're, you're using it for, you know, it's, uh, it's a very, uh, it's, it's a very nice way to actually, you know, keep your body healthy and, and, you know, trying to implement whatever, you know, you, you need it for. So if you're, if you want to feel calm at nighttime and you want to have a certain tea at night, you know, it, it's nice to have that, you know, have that, or, you know, if you, you're looking for, you know, for different things, you know, it's, it's uh, tea is definitely very effective. It's popular all over the world. And some of the blue, you know, the blue zone um, areas, they are very big on tea as well. Yeah, it's an easy way to get um, the nutrients that you need. And talking about nutrients, I think we also have to uh, consider nutrient deficiencies. Right. Yeah, because I have, um, you could do like hair mineral testing to look for nutrient deficiencies. And sometimes it's as easy as adding magnesium back in, yeah. addressing low vitamin D levels. Um, there are so many things that were deficient in B complex. A B complex is really important. I will sometimes just do the adaptogenic blends with the B complex and people will be like, oh, wow, like that's a really good, I can already tell the difference. It doesn't take a lot sometimes, but you have to know what you're looking for. Right. And one thing I will mention because primary care doctors do this a lot is the reference ranges that you see on the lab, right? They'll be like, oh, it's a, within the reference range. That's normal. But that's just pulling together the general population and telling you what the reference is for the general population. And yes. the general population is not healthy, right? Mm -hmm. So then, he, so you have to like take that into account that there's a difference between the normal reference range and what's optimal, right? Because people come to me with their labs and they'll say like, my doctor said that this was normal. Like, okay, I guess, but it's not optimal. So how do we optimize these labs? Yeah. And that's like another thing that you have to pay attention to. Yes. And I think that's a big thing that I've, I've seen many people um, get misled by is that they will go to their primary doctor and they'll get blood work and the doctor says, oh, everything's fine. And then they'll they'll go to a functional medicine doctor or function, you know, and, and they'll be like, well, you know, you really have to look at this because, you know, this is like you said, not optimal, you know, like, you, you know, they see some changes where that if it keeps going like this, it might elevate or turn into this or, you know, and you want to prevent that. So you need to start doing X, Y, and Z, you know, and a primary doctor wouldn't think of it like that. Yeah. And then the other testing that I do in this population is uh, gut testing. I don't know. Did you ever do like, like gut testing stool tests with your yes. primary? That's like a, a big one. Um, and especially because women tend to have a lot of thyroid issues as well. And then you see that they have like an imbalance of bacteria in their gut or they have parasites and some parasites can predispose to like certain conditions or joint pain and things like that. And also how you metabolize estrogen. Uh, this is one thing that I had to learn early on in my practice is that women metabolize, like we metabolize estrogen in the liver and then it goes in the large intestine. And then from there we excrete it. Some women are, who are, suffer from constipation will be reabsorbing the estrogen. So mm -hmm. if you are having issues with your digestion, constipation, and you get started on estrogen, that can cause some side effects. 
right? right? And you mentioned it before, we're a whole system, right? Everything works together. Hormones do so much, but just so does your digestion. So if yes. you're just looking at one thing and not the other, you can potentially trigger uh, like unwanted side effects if you're not looking at that as well. Definitely, definitely. And I think, you know, people don't realize, but what we eat during menopause and during perimenopause plays a big role also. Like, you know, people don't realize how food and, the, and, and how it plays a role in how we feel and, and how we can, you know, either it can make our, our perimenopause worse or it can make it better or, you know, and it could even help if you eat eating the right foods, it could assist them helping your, your body to become more balanced. You know, how do you feel about that? I totally agree. And one of the things that I tell my patients is there has to be an emphasis on fiber, right? 25 grams or more. And if you're struggling with, you know, eating the vegetables or the fruit, you can try the powders, but really you want to get that from fruits and vegetables. And when you're looking at the vegetables, you want to go for cruciferous vegetables. Uh, one, because they have, they're high in fiber, but two, they also help with detoxification yeah. as well. And so these are the things that you want to focus on. And then the other thing is protein intake. Um, I'm not great at it, so I know it's hard, uh, yeah. but you want to focus on protein intake, especially uh, the older that you get, the more important that it becomes. So right. these are all things that like we, we discuss during a consultation, because as you're bringing, you know, to the attention of everyone, it's not just one thing. It's not just like, oh, you have perimenopause, here are some hormones. We have to, how is your digestion? What are you eating? How are you managing stress? These are all things. How are you exercising? How are you sleeping? Like all of this plays a role in how you're gonna feel. And as far as um, you said, when you eat, anytime that you're eating, you're either encouraging inflammation in the body, right? Or you're gonna be bringing it down. So obviously, if you want to have a weekend where you're, you know, having a good time, you're at a birthday or you're celebrating or on vacation, that's fine. But what matters is consistency the rest of the time that you're not, you know, doing those things. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I think I think that's one of the things that women really experience too during during um, perimenopause and menopause. They experience a lot of inflammation, and then I think that's also when the joint pain starts. And also, they're looking at their stomachs and they feel like they're in their third trimester, you know. And they're like, "Why? You know, why is this happening to me?" Yeah, and that's one of the the reasons I really like the stool test. Uh, because I had a patient who was getting a lot of joint pain and she had uh, hypothyroidism. And then we identified that she had a parasitic infection there, which was causing a lot of inflammation. And she told me, my stools are normal. I'm going to the bathroom regularly. Why are we doing this? And I'm like, yeah. just please. So I saw that she had a parasitic infection and we treated it and her joint pain went away in her hands. Um, so that's just to say it is an issue. And a lot of it, a lot of times it can come like from your digestion. Also, alcohol is one a big one that can cause inflammation in your joints. And then, as I mentioned, the decrease in estrogen. Like, there's so many reasons it can happen, but it is all driven by inflammation and that loss of estrogen. Um, right. So that is a, a big one as well. Yeah, I, I think, you know, for women, for, or, you know, what, what would be some advice that you give, you know, if you're, if you're starting to get around the age of perimenopause or you're starting to see, you know, slight um, symptoms, maybe you can, you know, go over real quickly again, you know, some of the common symptoms that they, you know, that they might have and, and what to do if they start experiencing changes that they weren't experiencing before. So the, like, just to overview of the symptoms, when they come to me, majority of the times, it's like, they're feeling very emotional, they're having trouble sleeping. Um, they feel like physically they're not performing how they were previously, but those are the main ones. Uh, in perimenopause, you can start progesterone, right? And testosterone, depending on, you don't really start estrogen until menopause. But I'm just bringing that up because progesterone will help with sleep and it helps with mood. So if you go to a functional medicine doctor, right? What would I do? I would encourage that we test all your hormones with your stress hormones. But if you are really, really struggling, progesterone is easy to start and it's safe to start. Um, people will normally see improvement in their mood and sleep within like one to two weeks and then it continues to, to build up. Um, and then 
I think that the other thing is it's, you don't just have to go to a functional medicine doctor. I know um, acupuncturists and chiropractors tend to be very holistic as well. So if you have any provider like that, that you can talk to about what your symptoms are, and I would not get discouraged. We're not trained in medical school or residency on hormones, like mm -hmm. very, very little. So if you have a primary care doctor and you go and you're like, hey, I'm feeling off, um, and they want to start you on an antidepressant or they want to tell you like, hey, no, you're fine. I mean, not that I have anything against antidepressants. I just see that a lot of times hormonal imbalances are being treated with antidepressants yeah. to find a provider that aligns with you, right? That's the first thing because some women will let years go by and then they're really suffering before they go and get help. Right. Um, so that is like the main thing. And as far as finding a provider, you can find one through the Institute of Functional Medicine, like ifm.org. They have a list of providers in your area and you can see what they specialize in if you're trying to find um, help. But, but yeah, I would just say, we know our body and I have women who come to me and they're like, my doctor gave me Zoloft or whatever. And I know it's not that, yeah. right? So just trust yourself when you feel like something's off and it's not you know, what your primary care doctor is, is telling you. A lot of those antidepressants, some people do need them, but a lot of them cause major side effects too, you know, and um, they make you feel emotionless and a lot of them can give other side effects. So, you know, it, it makes sense to really think about, you know, what is the root cause? What is, you know, what is the depression from? And so many women, you know, that I've known that have experienced menopause have felt very depressed, have felt like they're worthless, have be felt like, you know, they start to, you know, recollect on their life and they're not happy with who they are. And, you know, they start their emotions in there and, and their thoughts are like, all over the place and they're not the person that they used to be because their their mind isn't functioning you know on, with a clear head and a lot of that when when they when they did start you know balancing their hormones they felt so much better yeah sometimes i start my consults with people crying telling me how they're feeling and it's always like okay i can like we can work on this like don't worry because i can feel that despair right? When they're talking to me that first time, but it is not permanent. You can definitely do something about it. Right. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, if, you know, if a person uh, wants to get started, you know, what's the best way to, you know, um, to start really looking into, you know, balancing your hormones um, for someone? Because a lot of people don't know a lot about it, you know, but they know that they're not feeling right you know, um, you know, what are some tips that you can give somebody that is experiencing symptoms, but they're not sure really what to do? Because a lot of women I knew are very, were very fearful of going to see a, a functional medicine doctor or fearful of hormone, you know, therapy. And, and you know, they were scared to try different things um, because they didn't know a lot about it. And what you don't know, you fear. So, you know, what would be your advice? So I love reading. Um, and one of the things that I, I give to all like the new women who I work with, uh, depending on what stage, The Spark Factor is a great book. It was written by Dr. Molly Maloof and it's a biohacking book for women. So she goes through all the things that we just talked about, how you know exercise is important at different stages, gut health and hormonal health. And she even goes through why um, we got it wrong with the initial women's health initiative studies. And so she can kind of explain because I think educating yourself is the main thing. The new menopause is a great book because she goes through different cases of women, but also like these symptoms that we didn't know were part of perimenopause and menopause. And she explains it, but she also talks about the nutrition, how nutrition needs to change during this time, uh, which I think is super important. And then some providers, uh, myself included, I always do like a 15 minute free consult with people because I understand that people don't know what it is and it's just to have that conversation and even if I don't end up working with someone I and I can point you like hey look at these resources this might help you right because it's not you have to have like a really good relationship with your provider I feel right so, and sometimes you don't you know you don't understand or you don't click so here are the resources this is what you can look into but those are the first two books that I always recommend uh, because you'll learn so much more than what you set out to 
to learn. And I feel like processed foods really play a role on, you know, really throwing off the hormones. And, you know, there's been so many, um, so much research, you know, especially like when they were putting hormones in eggs and, you know, they would, they would, you know, market it very sneakily and say no added hormones. And, you know, they would put in, you know, hormones in chickens and they were put in arsenic in chickens. And a lot of the foods had all these different types of, um, you know, ingredients and dyes in the food and it was thrown off the hormones. And you even saw like some, some young ladies at, at the age of eight, they started to develop breasts and they started to go through, um, you know, start to go through menstruation. And, you know, so, you know, uh, you know, the way we eat could affect us from, you know, from into our childhood years, if we're not careful with the foods we put in our mouth. And, and when it comes to perimenopause, and it comes to menopause, what's your intake about, you know, the foods we eat, and what foods to stay away from? That's a good question. I could talk about that for like an hour, because it's crazy how, uh, unhealthy, right? Like, and things are hidden. Uh, I was telling one of my patients, I was at an Airbnb and I was using the salt and I turned the salt label over only to find that the salt also had sugar. And I'm like, but why? Right. Yeah. So uh, one of the things I have a, a form that I give to patients and it's on reading food labels, because I do think that a lot of this stuff is hidden. You can try your best to eat healthy, but if you're not reading food labels, they're very sneaky with the natural flavors and with the food dyes and all these things. So reading food labels is really important. I say that uh, the simplest way to think about it is that if it doesn't come from the earth, don't eat it, right? That's if you're trying to eat healthy, like the, the cheese its are really like not from the earth, stay away from those. Uh, you want to, if you want to eat crackers, they have crackers with like flax seeds and things like that that are a little bit more natural. So less right. ingredients is better, right? If I look at a food label and there are 20 things on there, uh, I stay away from that. The other right. thing is what we're drinking. In my patient population, a lot of people are, you know, like drinking these iced teas and these things that have like artificial ingredients or the energy drinks. That's another one I advise people not to really get into, but mm -hmm. The cleaner you can eat, if it comes from the earth, eat it. Um, but then like grass-fed meats versus the, you know, what we normally have, the conventional. We have seen that there's more inflammation. You'll get more inflammation from eating the conventional meat than from grass-fed meat. Where you're getting your food really matters. And sometimes it's it's hard, but, um, you know, you have lists that can help you like the the Dirty Dozen or the Clean 15 that's uh, something that I point my my clients to if they're trying to be mindful of spending because you know food can get expensive. Um, and then snacks, right? Like some people go towards these like granola bars thinking that they're healthy because they're advertised as healthy, yeah. but they're not, right? right? So then instead, why don't we like snack on some nuts or get a you know an apple and almond butter? It, it's about reading the labels, knowing where your food comes from and just avoiding processed food because the more processed it is, the unhealthier it is. Um, so that's a big one. It doesn't just affect perimenopause. I think that the reason we're seeing so many chronic diseases now is from the food and so much cancer and especially in young people, right? We know the rates of colon cancer have gone up. Um, I, ha I knew someone that two weeks ago, 32 years old was diagnosed with breast cancer and like these things should not be happening. But uh, I really do think that food plays a really large part. And if you notice, I have patients who will go to Europe with, I mean, they might have like digestive issues. They'll eat everything that they want in Europe. And then they come back and they're like, oh man, now my stomach hurts again. And like the symptoms I was having came back because some of the ingredients that we put in our food are not allowed in Europe. So yes. I think that that's also something that's really interesting and to pay attention to. Yeah. When I went to Europe, I, I it was a good majority of our foods were banned in in Europe. You didn't see a lot of foods. A good majority, a, a very large majority of our foods are banned. They will not purchase or let it into the country because of all the toxic, you know, ingredients that we carry in our foods to to make them look plumper or to make them look more, you know, sellable. You know, there's a lot of foods that are clear, and we put dyes in them just to make them look more appealing to the buyer you know there's so many things that we do you know to keep to keep foods to so they last longer on the shelves and that spray you know. that a peel yeah exactly 
you know, and these are all things that are just toxic to our body. And if, when they go in our body, they stay in our body and our body doesn't know what to do with them or how to break them down. And then, you know, they start leaching onto our organs and these are when all the problems begin, you know, and the changes occur in our bodies. Oh, yeah. And the endocrine disruptors, like also in the packaging, like plastic, that the, um, that will have endocrine disruptors in it. Certain foods are endocrine disruptors, meaning that like they mimic estrogen or other hormones and they can start causing imbalances in that way. Um, I mean, there's so much, like even the rates of infertility have gone up as our exposure to these toxins have has increased. There really is a lot like that goes into the food. And that's why that can be a whole conversation for like an hour because there's just so much to talk about and so much education. And that's why I made that form for my patients on reading food labels because some people didn't notice, right? Until they started reading the labels, like all oh, these things that I'm eating are terrible. Right, exactly, exactly. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you wanted to really summarize it and emphasize, what would you emphasize like some important factors that you really want the listeners to understand? Well, the main thing, thinking about the women that come to me, as like I mentioned before, is um, there is something that can be done. However you feel, like there is a natural way to make you feel better. Uh, I would say to trust and listen to your body. And when it comes to hormones, the benefits are not just uh, like aesthetic, you know, like to look good, but there are actual health benefits to addressing hormones, right? Improved heart health, bone health, and mental health and cognition. So that is something that I want to highlight. And the other thing I want to highlight is that everything that you do lifestyle wise, how you're sleeping, how you're moving, how you're eating, how you're addressing stress is going to play into in the conversation of perimenopause and menopause, how severe your symptoms are, or how you can improve your symptoms, right? Um, so that's where I would summarize that. And then just resources, those two books that I mentioned, The Spark Factor and The New Menopause, for anyone who listened to the conversation and wants to dive a little bit deeper or understand a little bit more about how they can improve their hormones. Uh, I think that's excellent advice. And what, can you tell everybody some of the services that you provide? Yeah, so... I do like membership based services and they can be anywhere from three, six months or a year. And we normally start out with blood work and one of those hormone tests that I mentioned, plus or minus the gut testing. And when we work together, we're going through like a protocol. And if we're doing hormones, that can take anywhere from like three to six months if we're addressing the gut health. But we really work on all aspects of your health. We're looking at the stress. We're looking at the exercise. We talk about nutrition and obviously not all at the same time. That's why we have these different packages so that it's not so overwhelming. Um, and we're slowly just gradually making changes. And I like to really, um, we're in a contact a lot, right? At least monthly, because there's so many places where you can pivot, right? Like if things are not working, we pivot or what can we add? And it's all about optimizing. And my goal when I work with people is that they don't need me anymore. I mean, yeah. it's always sad, but you want to get people to the point where like they're self-sufficient on their own and they've learned enough about their body that like they don't need my help anymore. And that's right. kind of like where we, we work together, but it's all membership based. And whether you're doing three, six months or 12 months, we are normally seeing each other monthly and just kind of tweaking things as we go along. I love it. I love it. I think it's so important. I think people should really look into functional medicine. And if you don't know a lot about it, I would suggest that you really look up Dr. Victoria and look up her website and really um, understand the concept of the um, of, of functional medicine and hormones and how it plays a, a huge role in your overall health and your life and the books that she had mentioned. And, and I think those are great ideas for, you know, to, to start off in, in your learning journey about hormones, about perimenopause, about menopause. So you can start understanding why these things are happening to you and how you could actually change them. And I think one important factor that you, you placed that I thought was really good was that, you know, it's not just if you decide to do hormone therapy, it's not just doing hormone therapy and everything's going to get better. You have to make a dedicated lifestyle change 
change. And, and when, you know, people get scared of that, but you know what, when you make a lifestyle change and you, you're feeling good, it becomes a part of you. And before you know it, you don't even realize it's it, that lifestyle change is just the way you do things. It's not, it's not a job. It's not, you know, it's not something like the word diet where people feel they get stressed when they hear that word. It's a yeah. lifestyle change that makes you feel better. And if you just, it's just a, a new way of living. So you can continue to feel well. And I think it's important that people understand that it's not just hormone therapy, but it's what you put in your bodies. It's how much sleep you get. It's, you know, it, there's a lot of factors that go into it. And it's really, you know, everything you do to your body plays a huge role on how you're going to feel and how your hormones are going to react and, you know, how well balanced you're going to be overall. And, you know, can you tell everybody your website address again? Yes. So the website is www.healthfulrootsmd.com. And then I also have the Instagram at healthfulrootsmd. And there is a link in the bio there so that people can book the free 15 minute consult calls. Um, and like I said, if I can't help you during those calls, I try to redirect people to a place where they can get what they're looking for. I love it. This has been amazing. I really think, um, you know, today's discussion was, you know, was amazing. We we need more of this. We need more education because there's so many women that go through perimenopause and they go through menopause and they just deal with it and they're afraid because they don't know and you know they're just they're afraid what's going to happen if they start playing with their hormones. What's going to happen if I start doing this and they don't understand everything. So, you know, being able to, you know, get more education, to understand, to know what resources to go to to get more education is really important because you know it, it, by by working on balancing my hormones changing my lifestyle and going on hormone therapy it completely changed my life it, it made me feel so much better and I was able to function and do the things that I couldn't do for a while because my hormones were completely off balance and you know so I really think what you're doing is great and I really, you know, thank you so much for being on the show today. I hope you'll come back. Maybe we can have that food discussion because I think that's a really yeah. important discussion. And, uh, you know, I really thank you so much for coming on the show. You're doing a great job. And I think, you know, changing people's lives and, and helping women really get through some tough times because those going through perimenopause and menopause and postmenopause is a huge you know, stress on a woman. And it, it it's really, you're going through stuff that you have, you know, that you just don't understand and you don't know how to control and you, you don't want to feel like, you know, the way you're feeling. So, you know, being able to have someone like you who can guide people and teach people how they could actually live a normal, happy, productive life and get back to the way they used to be is, is really important. So I thank you for everything you do. And I thank you today for coming on the show. You've been great. Well, thank you for having me and letting me talk about one of my favorite topics. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day, Dr. Victoria. All right. You too.